Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have a Sony FDT-5BX5. It was released in the 1993 model year. There's no date on this one so I can't tell exactly what year this particular one was produced, but uh, the manual says 1993. Um, apologies for not doing an unboxing. I actually bought this working. It was supposed to be fully working so I didn't uh, plan on making a video on it, but um, it, uh, sure enough it has some problems, so here we are. Um, I'll go over a couple of the features real quick. Uh, this is a 5-inch color CRT. It's not a Trinitron, which is actually interesting. It's, I think it's one of the only Sony TVs, other than the other black and white Walkmans, that don't have a Trinitron in them. This actually has a slot mask CRT, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, AM FM tuner, um, 80 millimeter speaker with mega bass sound, uh, audio video jacks, and a voltage synthesizer tuning system. Um, this one is uh, pretty filthy, uh, which is fine since I planned on using it for uh, another project of mine, but I will give you a look here. Um, this here is the radio tuning knob. It's got a little convenient handle. Near the back, this actually isn't a battery operated portable CRT. The only uh, power source is the, uh, the jack in the bottom here. So there's no, um, there's no power. There's no ba internal battery compartment. Um, but on the back here, you can see we've got the AV port, a little switch to switch from AV, external antenna, contrast, brightness, um, those types of things here, hue, saturation, and the uh, adjustable um, antenna. Finally, on the last side here, uh, you've got the TV, AM, FM, function switch, and then the VHF, UHF uh, band. And then um, on the front, we've got some channel buttons and a earphone jack, and also the, uh, you know, the, the band indicator, uh, which is um, up on top here, kind of hard to see. But, um, and then, oh, of course, the, the power button. Um, so again, this one's pretty filthy. Um, we'll plug it in here and show, show you what's wrong with it uh, first, but then uh, we'll get right into disassembling it and uh, cleaning it out, because I'm sure if it's as disgusting on the outside as it is on the inside, uh, we're gonna need to clean up the inside too. Right away, I was pretty excited, because uh, it's working, right? Um, you know, there's no, TV anymore that it's all got digital, but um, you know the screen turns on and uh, it does this cool little like scanning for signal bar thing, which I find is kind of neat. Um, if it's in the uh, different band mode, it'll turn to red here, which is kind of uh, kind of neat. Um, but you know the the TV turns on and uh, you know it has white color, which means all the guns work, which is which is was a good sign. Um, uh, what also works is if you switch it to the um, radio. Uh, no, nope. you can hear it right away that the uh, the radio also works very well. Um, so you know, things were looking pretty good. Um, unfortunately, uh, none of those things that are working are what I actually bought it for. I bought it for the AV port, um, which I will switch over to right now. Um, I'll show you a little shot of that hook up so there's the um, jacks hooked in and then I'll flip the switch on it here so now it is in uh, AV mode and we'll turn on the Super Nintendo and you'll see the problem um, so right away um, you can see that there's video getting into it but uh, the sink is broken um, and so, you know, there, there's colors coming in, but the, the sync is, the signal isn't getting, the TV isn't getting the sync signal. Um, and also there's, um, the volume isn't working, or there's something wrong with the volume as well. Um, because it shouldn't be making that buzzing sound. Um, but you can, well, I guess. Um, so, uh, th that's the problem. The problem is the, the AV ports are not working. I'll turn that off quick. Now if I unplug, oh actually, wow, okay, well, 
I just unplugged it just now and uh, I pulled the AV port out with it. So uh, that was, uh, that's the problem. The problem is the AV port's broken. <laughs> um, so, wow. Yeah, so I think this will just be soldering this back in somehow. Uh, that'll be the that'll be the problem. Okay, here we are at the back of the beast, and we're gonna take some of these screws out. Okay, so we got our first look inside here. Um, honestly, I kind of expected it to be a little dirtier. I mean, it's not clean by any means, but um, I've seen filthier CRTs on the inside that looked a lot cleaner on the outside. So um, still definitely some dust and um, debris and whatnot, but um, you know, it doesn't smell like smoke or anything, which is always a huge bonus. Um, so you can see, um, one of the reasons why I'm really interested in this is it's such a stubby tube um, from front to back. You know, it's only like the width of my hand, which is uh, very short for a, a full-sized CRT. Um, so let us um, take this outside and clean it up with the air gun and then we'll bring it back inside and we'll check out that port. Alright, so on to the fixing. Um, it might be kind of hard to see, but um, right away I can tell the problem with the audio port is that it's got a cold solder joint. It might be hard to see, but um, you can see this bottom solder ball is just wiggling. Um, so right away that's the issue with that audio buzzing. Um, and then the top one, I guess I kind of expected it to be loose, but um, the top solder balls don't appear to have uh, any wiggling on them, so uh, there might be a break inside the plug, which is bad news. So I think the best course of action here is going to be to uh, desolder this port and uh, get a closer inspection of it and uh, try to uh, repair it if it's broken. Let's get that socket out of there. Okay, so right away we can see the problem. Um, like mainly, you know the, you know the the grounds aren't there. I don't know, so the the plugs that are supposed to go to the ground are not there. But also the pad had entirely separated on the audio port, and the pad on the video port is essentially like entirely disintegrated. So. Um, I'm going to have to probably do some jumper wires from here to here and here to here. And uh, that'll probably be what does fix it. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do about these grounds, um, but I will need to figure something out there. So it appears on closer inspection after cleaning it with a 99%. Um, there's only one pad that totally lifted off there. The rest of them do appear to be in relatively okay shape. So the question now will be, um, you know, can I get that ground plug back on the video? And um, what will that mean for the audio that I don't have one? I'll have to figure that out too. But um, we'll check over this plug here with the multimeter and make sure that it's still okay. Okay, so I did pop this little um, ground uh, circle out or back in, and but the, the big problem is that um, let's see if I can find this a little easier. Is 
is that the the leg is too short on here um, and so I don't think that's even going to go through um, but if that ground was broken off um, which it I mean I pulled it right through then that would explain that maybe the TV doesn't um, enter the AV sink unless um, it detects the ground um, so I have a another AV jack off of a, a CRT that had a bad flyback and I might be able to um, you know get this into here somehow because I still need these mounting points so I might be able to combine the two of these to make a good one that's strong and not broken and and whatnot um, so uh, there might be a little bit of like gluing going on here or whatever but uh, we'll see what I come up with this is what we have. I'm not super happy about how this turned out, but um, the choices were to stay with the old one and the bad pins and missing ground and, and all that, um, or try to, you know, make a combination of the good ports. So uh, here we have, uh, and at least the colors are right now, video and, and audio. Um, the big difference being obviously that these ones uh, mount separately on the original they mounted in the bottom and these mounted uh, out towards this way. So I've had to solder wires to the individual leads um, and then I'll have to um, go around and, uh, and solder them to the bottom of the PCB. But uh, this is what we're gonna do and it should work just fine. Uh, so let's, let's get on it. Let's get these wires soldered on here. All right, that's all our wire soldered. Let's get it back up and plugged in and see if we've uh, restored the audio and video. We're all plugged in and we're ready to test. So far we haven't ruined it. Haha, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. Wow. Okay, well, that's one part of it. Now the question is, does the sound work? So there's no right channel because it's a mono only button. Oh, that is awesome. Wow. Well, now that we're here, let's check out the geometry real quick. Been uh, super curious. Let's see, get the grid up. Okay. Uh, let me swing this. For a. Um, little TV like that, that's um, that's not too bad. Convergence is, um, the red's off a little bit, and then uh, obviously the geometry has got some problems in the corner here, but um, overall, not bad at all. Um, you want to make sure that the, the colors are good. Let's check out the guns real quick. Okay, so there's our guns. Our guns look pretty good. Uh, the blue and the green look a little weak. Uh, the red's pretty strong, um, but uh, not too bad. It's um, it looks pretty good. Uh, before we get back together, I noticed there were quite a few pots on it for adjustment. So I'm going to try and uh, balance out the color, and then I'm also going to try to uh, fix a little bit of the geometry going on. So uh, there's there's a uh, pots for the red drive and the blue drive. Um, so we'll see how changing that does any. That, that's pretty good for the blue. Let's see if we can tone the red back just a bit. That looks 
a little better. All right, let's fix the, uh, do some work on the grid here. the hue right there. This is the color. Which we're going to need all of that. The drums are a little tired. Contrast here. Again, we've got some tired guns, so we're going to need all of that. And then brightness. And tired guns, we need all we can get. All right. So those are all the adjustments that I can see. So now let's get it back together and see how it looks. Um, I like, there is a, one more thing to uh, tune and that is the settings on the flyback itself. Uh, so I'm going to adjust those now. Starting with the yeah, focus and screen. So let's get the screen up so we can try and get some of these guns to come back. Okay, and now let's try the focus adjustment. Oh, that made a huge difference. It's hard to tell on the camera, but in person that just made it Super, super crisp now. Oh my goodness, does that look good now? Wow. The linearity is eh. But man. Oh, it is sharp as a razor now. You can just barely see it. But it does say that the CRT is made by Samsung. Um, so that's uh, very interesting. That's probably the only Sony TV with a CRT in it made by Samsung. All right, enough messing around. Let's get this back together. All right, so here we are all back together and uh, working great. I'm uh, super relieved that the port that I had made out of the combination of the two ended up being uh, a good move. It seems to be pretty solid and it's nice and rugged and it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything like the old one uh, was feeling. So um, yeah, I think with that, um, we're going to have to call it uh, a, a video here. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you on the next one.